All right. Hey there, everyone. My name is Atesh, and welcome to the YouTube channel. In case you are new here, go ahead, hit that subscribe button because we bring up a lot of fantastic projects, a lot of work on the programming basics and whatnot about the tech. Again, I will be giving you the goal uh, and the target for the comments in each one of the video. Uh, please, it, it's a humble request. Uh, these small comments or just a thanks note or just looking forward for the next video. These are my motivation. Please help me to achieve that. So for this video, we'll be just hosting up a comment target of 100. 100 comments, that's it. I know you can easily do that. Please help me achieve that. In this video, we'll be going through with a setting up of the project. We'll be starting an absolute from absolute scratch and we'll be going through, we'll be creating a new project on the app, right? We'll grab the required details from there and uh, we'll move forward from there. We'll be creating a bunch of files in this one. These are important for us. We'll not start writing in them in this video, but these are important project directory and structure that we need to set up. So uh, let me go up here. I am on my terminal and yes, my choice these days is warp. I'm enjoying this quite a lot. So what we need to do is uh, go into your folder directory, wherever you like to go. I'll copy this and uh, wherever you want to create the project, just go ahead and place it up here. So I want to create a new project and the name of the project, I'm going to call this one as uh, stack, right? I think that's a good name, but nah, stack overflow dash app, right? Nah, that's, that's a good name. Uh, would you like to use TypeScript for this project? Hmm. Why not? Let's go ahead, go with the TypeScript. Again, you don't need to worry about, in case you are JavaScript developers, I'll walk you through that, how you can add additional content with the TypeScript. But again, if you are comfortable with JavaScript, you can still follow through it. No worries there. And ES linting, yeah, give me linting. Tailwind CSS, we are gonna be using that. All of our libraries depend on that. Uh, source directory, I'll use in this one. Sometimes I avoid, sometimes I use, I'll use this one. App router, yes, yeah, give me the app router. Uh, customize default, no, I don't want to customize it. Should be all up and running and good. And very soon it should be able to do all of this. Come on, do it faster. Whenever I'm in recording mode, it actually works a tiny bit slower, probably already my CPU is being consumed in the video recording or whatnot. Uh, but hip, hopefully it should be done faster. There we go. Now we can just go ahead into the Stack Overflow clone and uh, no such directory, yes, of course. Stack Overflow app, right? Why did you suggest me that? Code, and let's fire up the VS Code that we have. All right, where do we have VS Code? Come on, where is my VS Code? Oh, there we go. Here it is. But turns out it should be loading up the project. It doesn't. Sometimes it surprises me, but anyway, I can drag and drop this folder up here. Uh, shouldn't be a big issue. There we go. All right, it loaded up another folder for me. Somehow it's behaving a little bit odd. Anyways, uh, no such big issue, no such big deal. We can just handle this one. All right, so our project is running. One good idea is to just uh, start the project. So npm run dev. Uh, next year's, for me at least these days, is notorious enough to show weird errors. But it's good, it's good. This time we are up and running with this one. So we'll just keep it up and running and we need a couple of new files to go with work. First of all, we need .env file and we'll also need another one which will be .env.sample. This is one for me so that when I upload these things on the GitHub, I can just provide you these samples. As soon as I add this .env file, I can go into my Git and can say that .env can be added to gitignore. This is the fastest and easiest way, by the way. Uh, and looks good, looks good. So .env is now added to my git ignore. All right, open up the .env and we want to create a couple of uh, variables up here. And all the variables needs to start with next underscore public. This is the requirement from the next JS, not from my side. And we'll be saying we need first one is app right underscore host underscore URL. You can name your variable whatever you like. I think host URL is a good enough uh, name will be needing one more and this one will be oops if i can just do that uh, we'll be needing project id as well app right underscore project underscore id and we'll be needing one more and this one is going to be this doesn't need to be a public one we can just go ahead and say app right underscore api underscore key 
All right, so I think this is good enough. You can just rename this one as next public, but these are not public keys, so yeah, good enough. Now, once we are done with this, now we need the host URL ID and the API key. That's all what we need from this one. So let's start a fresh project and we'll be calling this one as stack because the rest of all other names are taken up. Stack and create a next. Frankfurt is the only option available for me. Hopefully soon they'll be available in Bangalore, which is nearby me. Frankfurt is really far away and it creates a bit of a lag in the application. So this one is my project ID. So I can just go ahead and copy this. So this one is my project ID. And uh, what else do we need? We need to create an API key. So how can I do this? I'll add it into web and stack over overflow dash app write. And I can just go ahead and give it a local host. Make sure you also give that. Otherwise, your application will always throw the course error. You can just go ahead and give this local host. That's it. You don't need to write anything. Once you're uploading this on the Wurzel, make sure you click on this and asterisk.wurzel app is also there. Otherwise, it will be giving you the course error. NPM install app, right? We will be needing that, but we'll be needing one more. But since it's giving me the option, at least I can just go ahead and install whatever is there needed at the moment. I can install it. Uh, we'll be doing this manually on our own and this is the one. So we need the project URL and the project ID. So this is our project URL. Copy this and this is our project URL. We'll be creating the API keys in a minute. So we'll just go ahead and say next, go to the dashboard and hopefully now we'll be able to create an API key and API keys and you can just go ahead and create API key. My key name is uh, key one because I'll be adding another one. Once I record this video, I'll delete this one and I'll create the next one. We'll be needing everything, our database. Uh, as of now, we are not working with functions and messaging, but I'll walk you through with what all other things are there to work with. Let's just go ahead and grab everything. I'll go ahead and copy this and I'll go ahead and paste it. And again, you go ahead and grab your own key. Uh, this is my account just for projects and hobby, hobby projects. So yeah, we don't, we don't use it much. All right, so this is all good. And uh, trust me, this is all. This is all what we need from the AppRite. Our AppRite setting is all done. We won't be touching the AppRite further. We will be doing everything from the code centric part. All right, so this is all good. Now let's go ahead and create a couple of more files which will be useful for us. And I'll walk you through why they are useful and what's the reason behind that. So first go into the source and create a new file. Yes, we want to create a file, not a folder first. And we'll be calling this one as env, env.ts. Uh, this is my environment variable file. Uh, sometimes I'll be using direct process.env, but sometimes I need the TypeScript to be satisfied with all the things. So I'll be saying env, just like this, create an object. And in this, I'll be creating an object known as app, right? Because later on, might other variables might come in. And in this one, I'll be just creating an endpoint. So endpoint, what is my endpoint? I'll be grabbing it from process, process dot env dot and we'll be saying next host URL. Uh, but the problem is the app right I think not the app right the TypeScript thing is that this is not usually satisfied that I'm not sure whether this is a string type of variable. So we'll be casting this one as a string so that it's always and always happy. That's the whole idea. That's the goal. So put up a comma have another one. This one will be calling this one as project ID project ID and this one is a string. This one is next. No suggestion. Next underscore. I'll be copy and paste this one. This one is not host URL app right project ID. Project underscore ID. It should be giving me suggestions. But anyways, and another one is API key, and that will be coming up from process.env. There we go. We got suggestion, and this is the one API key. Now we can just wrap this up. This will make our life so much easier later on. And last but not the least, go ahead and export it. Export default env. 
So there we go. You saw that we are not doing much. We are just grabbing all these environment variables, casting them as a string to make our life easier later on. Wherever we need that, we can just go ahead and import all of this. So this is the part one. We can shrink the app, everything up here. Now, another thing that is required for us and will be required for the next video is go ahead and create a couple of uh, files and folder structure. So for this, I'll go inside the source directory and inside, hmm, we should do this inside the source or we can do this outside. We should do everything inside the source, I guess. So let's go inside the source and I'm going to go ahead and create a new directory. I'll call this one as models. Now, usually I love to keep all of my modeling structure inside this one, nothing else. Uh, for example, I just keep how my data will look like in the database. We'll be doing exactly the same, but we'll be keeping a couple of extra files here. I don't want to keep them in utils, personal reasons, uh, personal advantage of doing the things. But again, you, you go ahead and do yourself. So I'll just go ahead and create a models inside this. And once I'm inside the models, I'll be creating a couple of folders. So let's go ahead and use MKDIR. It's much easier and faster to do things here. So I'll be creating one client, which will hold all the client configuration of app right here uh, so that we can just connect this one. We'll also have one for server. So we'll just go ahead and do like this. And I'll be creating a couple of files as well. Uh, usually there is an index.ts file. I'm not sure what I'll be doing with this. If I need to have a centralized exporting of all of this, I can do that there. And one thing I'll be naming all of my databases, my collections, everything up here. So I'll keep that in the uh, name.ts. So that is it. Once I have this, I can see I have my directories and structure all, all lined up nicely and easily. There is nothing inside the client. So first I'll go ahead and create a config file inside my client, client and client. And I will be calling this one as config.ts. Uh, nothing much, the configuration that how can my client connect to the app, right? That is all. That is the whole goal of this one. Uh, the server is going to be a little bit interesting. We'll talk about this modeling as well. But first of all, we know that there will be some files and folders into this one, specifically the tables in that. We'll be having comments, we'll be having questions, we'll be having answers, we'll be having votes. We want to keep them as a separate table structure for them. We'll discuss later on about the relationship and entities and whatnot. But I think it's important that we go ahead and create these files first. So let's go ahead and create touch and we'll be going inside the server. I think it would be good if I just go ahead and CD into servers and then start creating here because there are many of them. So the first one is going to be answer dot collection dot TS. So this will hold all of my answers. Uh, we'll be having comments, comments or comment, comment is good enough. Collection.ts, we'll be having uh, questions, of course, question.collection.ts. If we have questions, uh, we will be having vote, vote.collection.ts. Now, one thing more, we are allowing users to upload the images as well. We don't want to be dependent on any other third party for uploading the images. We'll be using AppRite for everything. So we'll be declaring all these things inside the storage uh, dot collection dot TS. So there we go. Storage part is done. Now, uh, again, just like our client was able to connect on the client side, server also need to connect to the app, right? So for this, we'll be requiring a config config uh, dot TS. Now this hole is great so far. But we also need a script that we need to run it so that in case our application is getting deployed for the very first time, we are able to structure the collection automatically. If the collection is there, that's it, we'll not do anything. But if the collection is not there, we would like to set up this collection in the first go. So for this, uh, let's just call this one as a DB uh, setup. Feel free to call it as seed. Some people like to call it as seeding the database or seeding something like that. Uh, we'll be using this file for that. So there we go. Once I hit enter, this creates a whole lot of file. And that's why I said that we'll be creating just files in this one. Now, each of this file has a meaning and we'll be using that. We'll be discussing quite in depth about what do you want to have? If you want to have more fields, how you can read about them from the documentation, all of that. But this is the usual structure. Go ahead and dis uh, define how many tables or uh, the entry point or the data, basically entities you will be having. So each entity gets into its own file. Config is just for configuration. Setup is like seeding of the database or initializing the database. Rest of all is just pretty standard. The storage is also a collection, kind of a, a collection in the database, just like that. 
So I guess that's it. Uh, in the next video, we'll start with the client configuration. Super easy, copy paste material every single time. I have written it thousands of times, not thousands, but yeah, hundreds of times in the tutorials and not all of that. So this will give you a full idea of whenever a client or in the next years we have client component and server component, whenever client needs to talk to AppRite, how it can do that. Whenever database needs to talk to AppRite, how it can do that. So I guess that's it. Uh, this video will do this much only and let's catch up in the next video and uh, will be a little bit longer video. Be prepared for it. Let's catch up in the next one and please comments.